So I'm the founder of the Movement Family, also known as TMF. This stems back to my younger years. I was very fortunate to have a loving mother and father that were there for me throughout my academics and athletics. What did hurt me though, is many of my friends didn't have what I had growing up. I saw many of my friends have a father that was absent and a mother working multiple jobs to make ends meet. Where that young individual had a lot of downtime to make their own decisions and choices. Where at times those decisions weren't always the best. So in the year 2011, I just graduated from Methuen High School, received my diploma, and soon to head off to Anna Maria College to further my education and also continue my basketball career. That same summer, my soon-to-be head basketball coach mailed me a packet where I was asked to continue working out, staying in shape. So when I moved in at the end of August, I was ready to go, get prepared for the season. So that one packet is actually where this story started from. So that summer in 2011, I decided to do a three-mile run throughout the city of Methuen. And I didn't want to do that alone, so I asked about eight to ten of my personal friends to join me. And we did a three-mile run through Methuen. Soon, from eight to ten, it grew to 50 people by word of mouth and seeing pictures through social media. Now picture 50 individuals running together, and we utilize that with building motivation determination to finish something, right? We felt good about each other. We did not leave until the last person finished. Looking around at those 50 individuals in 2011, I was one of the few that was actually going to college. Most of those individuals didn't know what the next chapter consisted of. So with that three mile run, and a lot of us as strangers at that point, we were starting to get closer and closer with a simple run. A lot of those individuals looked at each other as brothers and sisters. We were becoming a family by believing in each other and sticking together. Where I wanted to design a program for anyone looking for a second family in life, one that may be seeking love, guidance, and support, because when I was younger, I had that. I wish everyone did. Started from a pain when I was younger. With no money, no facility, no one guiding us how to do this with this program, we decided to raise money as a group to do activities that maybe our parents never brought us to. We did a car wash at the Wave gas station in Methuen. We did a three-on-three -three basketball tournament at the Tenney Grammar School in Methuen, and we did a yard, uh, a yard sale in Lawrence. And with that money raised, we were able to do weekend activities such as mini golf, bowling, even went to a zoo. Now picture 18-year-olds looking at a giraffe and a lion for the first time in their life, but having a blast. Now picture us at the bowling alley, renting three lanes, and me with a camera saying, one, two, three, bowl. And I don't see one pin knocked down, it's a gutter ball. But we're at a point where we're laughing. You know, we're enjoying each other's company. I'm seeing the smile on their faces it meant the world to me. And we continued to grow closer. That same summer, me personally, I fell so in love with the city of Lawrence. Lawrence I see as so much talent, but at the same time, I saw a lot of homelessness, drug addiction. I also saw a lot of prostitution. I wanted to know, like, how does someone become homeless? Why does someone start using a drug? Why when I drive down Broadway Street in Lawrence, I see a woman standing under a street sign, staring down every car that drives by? I wanted to know. I wanted to learn someone's story. I was intrigued by it. So with a few TMF members on our spare time, we took this one notebook and we decided, let's study the streets of Lawrence. I went under every bridge in Lawrence. I went through every alleyway. I walked those railroad tracks until I hit a bordering town and I would stop. I wanted to see it with my eyes. Even through all my school years, I feel I learned more with seeing things than sometimes the books. And I feel like that was powerful to me. So I remember the day before I went off to college, 
it was so hard to leave what I, some, what I created of building that family and learning about the streets. Remember, I went over to my mom and I said, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can move into school. I feel like I'm leaving a part of me behind. You know, but I was told you got to continue pushing and through with your own goals to be able to continue what your dream is. So I went. Those four years, 2011 to 2015, that family I created, it was a summer-only program. So from May to August, every summer, I returned home, and I continued what we were doing with that three-mile weekly run. In 2012, after my first year of college, it's like we never, it's like we, le we continued where we left off, the three-mile run, uh, learning about the streets, but I did not want to be an individual that brought a goodie bag or a clothing donations, gave it to a homeless individual on the street, pat them on the back, say, hey, I hope your situation gets better. Take care. I wanted to learn the story more. So I wanted to be consistent. I wanted to show up to that person again. So what we decided to do is we took an index card approach. Me and a group of TMF, TMF members, we wrote little words of motivation on index cards. You loved. Believe in yourself. Never give up. Keep the hope. And in my old 2001 Nissan Maxima, we drove down Broadway Street during the night, pulled over, got out of the car, gave a homeless individual index card. At first, confused. Didn't really know who this individual was, why you're giving me an index card. But as I, look, as I looked at their eyes, looked down at the index card, I saw tears formulate quite often reading those words. People also donated gift cards to our program in 2012 when they saw what we were doing. McDonald's, Burger King, Dunkin' Donuts. And with those, with those gift cards, we took that homeless individual, walked them all the way down to Broadway and Essex Street in Lawrence, grabbed them some food, but utilized the conversation at the table. I'll never forget a young Hispanic female where I sat her down at the table and she opened up to me that I have not seen my son or my mother in seven years. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. I met a drug dealer. I became addicted. Now I'm in Lawrence, Massachusetts, totally lost. She said, Michael, I used to be so beautiful. I hate myself today. I think I've reached a point of hopelessness. And I heard those conversations, and it hit me right here. As I was meeting those first individuals on the street, one thing that pained me is I would see them one day, then they would disappear on me. Whether it was jail, getting into a program, passing away, or hopefully reuniting with family. So what we did, as these young 18-year-old TMF members, we decided to write their full name down. So if they disappeared, maybe we could look them up and see where they are. And with that specific young Hispanic female, she did disappear on us. And well, boy, was I lucky to find her name in the Eagle Tribune police log. She was arrested for sex for a fee with possession of a Class A substance. I took that name and I called every female jail in Massachusetts. I found out she was in Framingham Women's Prison. Now you're looking at a young 18-year-old kid who's never visited a jail before. I had no idea what I was doing, but I wanted to continue the relationship even behind the walls. So I took that drive to Framingham Women's Prison. I sat in the visiting room. Now, just to give you an image, it's not a glass window with a phone. I had a chair and a chair in front of me that was empty. She wasn't even out there yet. And I'm sitting here nervous like, oh boy, how is she going to react when I'm just sitting here coming to visit her? I saw her walk into that visiting room. She couldn't believe it. Shocked. Gave me a quick hug, sat down and said, why do you guys care so much? Just kept telling her, we believe in you. We want to see you reunite with that son and that mother that you have. And we continued to do that throughout the years. So in 2015, I graduated from Anna Maria College with a Bachelor of Social Work, and I decided to return home to make TMF full-time. We decided to have a Monday night meeting where the TMF members, which is a diverse young group of individuals, different backgrounds, race, age, who saw each other as family, 
where we concentrated on life topics. But I took the family I created in TMF and also the passion for the community and I meshed it together as one, family and community. And we decided to take our dream and continue working towards it. So in 2015, you know, we can, the run stopped at those times and it was more meetings. But in 2018, three years later, which is what we're most known of as the TMF dinner. And so me and a couple friends were driving into the bus station. And we saw a few homeless individuals sleeping on the benches. We go back to that TMF meeting next week. And we're like, hey, why don't we start a dinner in the middle of the bus station and see if anybody will come and eat as a family? So next Wednesday at 9 o'clock, we drive into the bus station. I put one circle table in my trunk, about five, six chairs, parked my car in the bus station, and I yelled out loud, does anybody want to join us for dinner? Can't go wrong with $5 little pieces of pizza the first night, right? So that's, that's what we did. And... We saw people start to walk towards that table. They sat down. They conversated. We go back that following week to the TMF meeting. And we're like, it worked. I can't believe it. Maybe this time we should, like, you know, maybe we can cook the food and we can have different trays and a little buffet type setting where the community started to cook. So the next few Wednesdays, we had a buffet style line for these homeless individuals, right? And they were having a meal every Wednesday night in Lawrence. 9 to 11 p.m. But we didn't want to stop there. I didn't want to be a soup kitchen. I wanted to continue working my way into your heart slowly. How can I make you believe again? How can I make you love yourself again? So we decided to bring a donations table inside the bus station on Wednesdays, where instead of digging through garbage bags to find a sweatshirt or pants, we'll have all the clothes on a rack hung up for you, where you can feel like a person looking through clothes. Next thing you know, we bring in a books table. And a homeless individual can go to the books table, choose a book to take with them. Then we have a games table. Who here remembers Shoots and Ladders in Candyland? We got some fans. So we were playing board games. But you see a homeless individual, someone that's addicted to smile, like they're a little kid again? Boy, as you, as, you, as I take a step back and I look at that, it's mind-blowing to me. Next thing you know, we got the live music. Wednesday nights, we got a saxophone player a band playing music. It's like dinner and a music. But we were just bonding. You know, in the crowd today, I have Karen from Tooksbury Detox, who she was able to provide beds for individuals that were on the street. We were getting people off the streets in Lawrence. I'd ask Carlos Mora, could you stand up real quick? Now, this individual right here, I found him sleeping on a bench inside the bus station, homeless, addicted. He said, I use because I feel so alone in this world. Right now, Carlos is 11 months sober, and he's in a program, and he's, and he's happy today. So I'm so proud of him. You know, I love him because, you know, he lived that. He was on that bench, you know, and to be here today and be 11 months sober and happy, it's possible, right, if we continue to work together as a family, you know, and we continue to move forward, we continue to have this dinner every Wednesday night inside the Lawrence bus station, right, where we try to work with you from the ground up to believe in yourself, and it's just little things about life that stick with me to this day when treating people with love. My dad used to send me a text message every single day throughout my high school days and my college days. And it would say, 86,400, what are you going to do with it? Remember the first time I read that message, I was like, what is this man talking about? But he said, you have 86,400 seconds in a day. What are you going to do with it? How are you going to make a difference in someone else's life? How can you make a difference within your own? And he texted me that every day. Where today, I stick with that mentality. My mom, growing up on the fridge, had a quote that said, people might forget what you said and forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. My mom was a big believer in loving people, treating people with kindness, right? Even in this group, in this, in this room right now, right? We have a, a ton of people that are here today where after this is over, 
We really don't know what someone's facing behind closed doors. Be kind. And I don't usually connect things to movie, but there's one movie that I love dearly. Has anyone seen the movie Pay Forward? There was this teacher that gave an assignment to a bunch of young students that said, how do you want to change the world? And this young boy takes a marker, he goes to the whiteboard, and he says, I want to pay it forward to three people, three complete strangers, and ask for nothing in return but to continue to pay it, full, pay it forward. So if we can do anything is just continue to love each other, treat people with kindness, and continue to fight for, fight for one another. So thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it.